back out on another adventure back in Snowdonia or southern Snowdonia flip down there that's the A470 that direction is Dolgethly and that direction is back to where we came from the small image radar we had a couple of um, mountains in mind for today but we've decided to stay a bit further south and we are going to do a summit camp on Wine Oya which is around the 700 metre mark and we parked the van in a lay-by and then we got this path I'm not sure we can make it out goes around to there and that's the start of the walk so looking forward to this at least it's dry and there's not much wind so hopefully it stays that way so let's crack on in the haze over there you've got the Rinogs Rob Ekvawa so there a Ren was over there me and Mark have camped there before so we've come past this area loads of times on our way to Snowdonia and we've always wondered what's up on top so um, we're doing white hour like we said earlier meant to do this last month but uh, we came here and the weather the wind was just it was too high we would never pitch a tent in that so we said we'd come back so here we are and we'll carry on the hike up past these rocks and see what's on the other side and make our way to the summit if you're new to the channel why not considering hitting the subscribe button it's free, it doesn't cost you anything and you'll be notified of any of our future adventures the good thing about doing hills we haven't done before it opens up other wild camping opportunities that summit over there is Penna Bryn Four Hog I think, I think that's how you say it and looking over there, some, there's some decent looking wild camping spots over there so that could be a future wild camping destination for us on the channel that's 685 metres so that's a nut all as well I'm assuming Whew. yeah definitely one for the future that We've sort of got onto the ridge now where it's levelled out a bit and this is what you see from the road you've got like the bull going all the way around and that's where they do the Mac loop so if you're here on a weekday chances are you'll see a jet hurtling through there yeah so we're going to carry on up that way to the summit We just come across this little gorge. We gotta check this out, Mac. Let's have a look. I know it looks interesting, don't we? I don't know where it ends up. Let's have a quick look. Well, I think on the US map it says this huge bodies. Is there? Yeah. Glad you told me that because I didn't know. I was looking at it earlier. You. Bloody hell. Don't go too near the edge there. Go on, check this out. You could camp over there if you wanted somewhere out of the wind. <laughs> Just don't do any sleepwalking, innit? Yeah. Because um, you won't be waking up again. <laughs> echo! Echo! You hear the echo? There's a hole down there. I reckon an animal's living in there, like. I think there's a couple of these round here, mate. Is there? Yeah. We'll have to be careful we're going there, won't we? That's awesome, man. I'm glad I came in, you know. 
You never know what you're going to see on an adventure, do you? We've just seen one disused quarry, and further along there's another one. Look at that. You've got some old stone buildings there as well. I'm assuming for the quarry workers back in the day. It's levelled off quite a bit now. And it's just easy walking to be fair. We can see our destination in the distance. Over there you've got the trig points. You might pick it up on the GoPro, you might not. But that's where we're heading. And that's wine oil. Oh yeah. I think it's 670 meters or thereabouts. But I think we've got to go down and back up by the look of it. So it's <laughs> where yeah. so going down following the path and the path goes. It looks like it goes next to the tree line by the fence. And then it's just a case of walking up the side of the trees into the top. It looks quite steep as well to be fair. Not far to go. I'm gonna do the final push now. Just climb over that stile. As you can see, this forms part of the Cambrian Way. And then we're gonna go all the way up there. And that'll be the hardest part of the day, I reckon. So all the um, um, ascent we've made. We lost. We've lost. Come straight back down this hill and then we'll <laughs> go back up again. No pain, no gain. Keeps you fit though, doesn't it? That's the main thing. Let's go. It's not easy, is it? No, it's not for you, no. We're sort of holding on, we're holding on to the fence and pulling ourselves up. <laughs> Look how steep that is. <laughs> is it? Yeah. It's lovely now, is it? Yeah. It's just a <laughs> ah. to, be, to be honest with you, I'm not looking forward to going back on this at all. Well, we're going to have to because there's no other way down. Unless you want to shimmy on your ass over there somewhere. Be alright, get your poles out and then just follow the fence down. Yeah. Be alright. And then back up there again. Another one in the books. Yep. Wine, oh yeah. 670 meters. And look at these views. Cadder Idris Range over there. Over there to the Rinogs. All we have to do now is find somewhere to pitch a tent. Over there looks quite good, Simon. I think. Maybe. There's not many flat places around here for a tent, but the um, thing is, we want the views of Cadder Idris as well, so I think we're going to make do somewhere around here. It's a bit trusticky like and bumpy. I think we can make it work. Um, what are you putting your tent to, Mark? Any ideas? Wanna go there? Looks a bit of a dip there, like, but I don't mind the dip because I, I can lie in it, lie in the dip. Is it? And like this is um, quite spongy. 
So it might be quite comfortable to lie on. Mm. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know where to go, I just don't know. Um, undecided, but I'm sure we'll think of something. We'll make it work as normal. Well, as 10 pitches go, I reckon Simon got a better deal. Let's have a look at mine. What in the world is that? Look at the state of this. If I sleep in air tonight, I'm going to be sliding off my pad all night. So I'm going to have to take all the guys out and then move it over a bit. I'm going to have to move it that way to try and level it out. Because that is bad. I'm not having that. I ain't sleeping in here. Right, let's move it. Bit of a pain in the ass, like, but let's get it done. The old faithful access one. And I still haven't repaired this. A couple of holes in there, but I burnt it with uh, on my stove. Stupid thing to do, I know, but um, I'll go repair that at some point. Right by the trig, overlooking Cadillac And it's weird because, like, you, you stood here, it looks awesome, but on a camera, it, it doesn't do it justice. So, we're happy with it. Mark will move his tent, like he said, <clears throat> but apart from that, it's all right, not too bad. No wind, no wind, Mark. No, good, isn't it? Yeah. It's a change. We can actually hear ourselves talk, you know, which is uh, a bonus. Or maybe not a bonus for some. I don't know. The only wind we're going to have will be inside our tent. <laughs> <laughs> That's guaranteed. But it was hell of a walk over here. It said on the OS map it's 51 minutes. No chance. It's more like bloody hour and a half, two hours, Mark, was it? Oh, well, uh, if we were stopping now and again, no. Yeah, but it's a fair, fair walk. I think some people have come from this. I think, well, I know you can go from that direction, but I don't know where you park the car. Um, we see other people coming up here. I think they took a different route to us. <clears throat> but hey, you live and learn, innit? Well, Mark is sorting out his tent and repositioning it. I'll show you what I got for food tonight. It was in the bag. Two Wagyu burgers. I had these last week and I'll tell you what, the taste of them is awesome. They're not cheap, but £5.50 for two, right? But I'll tell you what, they're well worth the money. So I got that, I got a couple of brioche buns, I got some sliced onion, and I got these. I got these are Marks and Spencer's, they're um, like burger discs, burger. Cheese and you got two slices, two slices, and uh, it's red Leicester and mozzarella. They're really good. Um, I've got some Mars bars, which um, I normally eat a few of these by now, but I haven't. I've got those, and I've got a Peter's minced beef and onion pie. Is that all of it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so that's all my food. Looking forward to cooking this and eating this later. And I think the next step we'll do is put the sleeping pad in and get my sleeping bag out. I've moved the tent now, and as you can see, looks better. Happy with that. Being inside, you check it out. It's quite, um, well, it's better than what it was, so yeah, I'm happy with that. That'll do for tonight. If you saw our last video, you would have seen I got sent this by Flaxtail. Great mat. Second time I'm going to use it tonight, so I'll put this up and get my sleep set up. All done. Um, and then I got my, my down bag, which is in that 
stuff sack, so that's the next thing I've got to do. This thing is absolutely huge and it fills up my tent almost. Um, and this is quickly becoming my go to mat. And I've got a, a Thermarest Neo Air as well, and this is quickly becoming my favourite. So that's all done. And of course, I've got the pump, and that doubles up as my, my light as well. A little bit of kit I've got, which I'm going to use tonight for the first time, is my jet boil skillet. And I'll show you that later. And of course, I'll be frying my, my burgers in there. It's um, Mark Goblin, and it's, it's awesome. Nothing sticks on that whatsoever, so it's easy to clean. Yeah, it's great. So I think now we're going to have a nice cup of coffee, and uh, no better place than to, to boil some water right by the trick point. So coffee's done. I just noticed on his trick point, there's an inscription in one of the stones on the side. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's LBH May 1977. I'm back in 1977. Me and Mark were nine years old. And 1977, was the year of the Queen's Silver Jubilee, I think it was. Yeah, 1977. God, it's mad, isn't it? I feel old, though. So it's about four, four o'clock now, um, and it gets dark about half four, something like that. So that's the um, that's the uh, delights of winter camping. You know, you've got shorter days, you're spending most of the time in the tent, but I'll just just show you around this hill gone and loads of loads of character it's got you know it's not flat it's nice and hilly all around you've got all these random trees just over that side of the hill it's, it's a nice place it's, it is it's not boring that's for sure it's, um, and, and of course you've got the trick and you've got some beautiful views um Cadred, just like we said and then you've got those rolling hills over there well, I've just taken a, a photo of that and it looks really good, so obviously I've zoomed in a bit. Yeah, so um, we got a bit of uh, a bit of time in the tents tonight, but like you said, that's winter camping and uh, that's the way it is. But it's a uh, great camp spot and uh, I'll definitely come back here again. We haven't seen a soul. So I'm using the Soto Windmaster, and what I like about the stove is is the um, pot support. It's quite big, and it holds this pan really well. Get in the gas up a touch. So there's enough oil in there now from the burgers. Put some onions in. Here. Yeah, it's getting dark here now. It doesn't it doesn't look like it on the camera but the light has definitely dropped. So these burgers are almost done. And then the next day is just to put the cheese. Cheese on, I'll just cover that up. I'm having this tonight. Let the cheese melt. A little turmac chili. Can't beat them. Wish I was having burgers on. And my giraffe, if you're lucky, you can have one or whatever. Have a try. Yeah, give them a go, innit? Give them a try, like. What I do then, look, is just put that plate on top and then the cheese will melt a bit quicker then. 
and save on gas. As you can see they're done, all I've got to do is paint them up. There's the rolls, there's some onion, and there's the job done. So there they are guys, burgers are done. Only one thing to do now is eat them. That burger is awesome. I'll give Mark one as well. <laughs> I'll never eat two of these. <clears throat> really tasty though. Sorry. <laughs> Just sat by the tent. As you can see, it's dark now. Daylight's totally gone, we're just having a chill out, having a couple of cans. And then we're going to have an early night, probably go to bed about half, nine, ten. So yeah, getting the tent soon, it's, it's gone a bit nippy now. So yeah, might have a lie in the down bags. A couple of cans. Cheers. Welcome back to camp. Simon's been in his tent, I've been in mine. I think I fell asleep for an hour. Simon was trying to talk to me and there was no response. <laughs> so yeah, just laid down and that was it, lights out. After all these years, we finally found out what the middle thing of a trig point is for. It's to put your can of beer in. Look at that, perfect fit. It don't even, it don't even rattle. It's Perfect, perfect size diameter for that can. It's good, that, isn't it? Perfect. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a, um, a mounting beer table. Yeah, it's, it's just made for us um, wild can campers. Of, yeah, for a can of Stromba, look at who, it. Who like a drink. Hey? But we know in reality, they got apparatus that screws in there. See the um, thread? And that's what that's for. I don't use anymore. I don't use um, trick points anymore. No, but in the back in the day, that was uh, used for an apparatus, what they put in there. But now it's for a beer can. That's what we discovered. Perfect. Isn't it? Yeah. We've had a great uh, day, a great night on Wine Oyer. Uh, pretty perfect campsite. We've only um, seen two people, and that was first thing this morning. I haven't seen anyone since. So it's been really enjoyable and it's time to hit the sack and we'll see you in the morning. Good night. Six. Me and Simon are both awake. Both had a decent night's sleep in fairness. Hardly any wind, which is always good when we're camping. And what a difference the day makes. Just being outside for um, a call of nature. We can't see anything really, it's all claggy, low cloud, whatever you want to call it. So we're gonna probably have a coffee and do a pack and dash this morning pack it up as soon as we can and get out of here so there's not much to see to be fair so we'll see you later yeah the weather's pretty grim out there this morning you can't see much I know it's dark but it's misty and uh, visibility looks a bit pants to be honest um, so last night then was the second time I've used my Flextail uh, 05 sleeping pad and Still holding firm after two nights, which you should do. Another great night's sleep. Slept probably about seven hours on you. It is quite warm, like I said on my previous video. So it is my go-to sleeping pad at the moment. I'm uh, using this, or prefer this, over my Thermarest because of the width and the size of it. So it's all good so far. 
So we're gonna wait a few more minutes and then pack everything away and then hopefully get out of here as soon as it gets a bit lighter. So yeah, good campus has been, really enjoyable as, not, as usual. So, can't complain, it's been good. Well, my tent is empty, all that is in my pack. Just got to put the tent down now and attach that to the bottom. Here's our rubbish bag, Simon's doing the same. But yeah, can't see a whole lot. It's getting a bit lighter, which is good. And as soon as we can see the path, we'll be headed down. Thanks for joining us on this wild camp on Wine Oya. As always, leave no trace. The tents are over there. No rubbish left behind. Only footprints. So if you really enjoyed the video and you want to watch more future content, give us a and like the video, give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing and hit the notification bell and you'll be notified of any future wild camping adventures. Until then, thanks for watching and we'll see you on our next video. Bye.